is from the nutrient. So he's going to tell us more about this. So, okay. so I'm going to pick up where Kurt just left off and talk a little more specifically about the catalog. And, and I actually grew up on a small dairy farm in St. Cloud, Minnesota. So this is coming back home for me. And before the internet, the dairy industry actually had a, a system of communication that was better than any other system of communication. It was called milk callers. You could tell a milk caller in Vermont something, and by the end of the day, dairymen in California were hearing it. I don't know how, but they somehow had that. But it wasn't a really, really effective way to communicate um, technology information and technical information. And so one of the things that Nutrient was founded for was to provide that information. And so leading co-ops and national milk producers and DMI came together and they founded Nutrient with the idea that we would reduce the environmental footprint of dairy and make it economically viable to do so. Now, that's a mouthful. My wife always says, yeah, but what does that really mean? We try to make money from that. So one of the ways we do that is by leveraging a much larger group. And you can see our technical team. And our, there's only about six people actually in Nutrient. But we pull in a lot of resources from a lot of different areas. And what we try to do is we try to build on the knowledge that has been created on farm and by traditional research and then use that to develop understanding of manure-based products, ecosystem markets, and then to document innovative technologies and effective practices, which is where the catalog comes in. And that, in order to get policy improvement and funding to develop markets, so ultimately we can be solutions to environmental issues. So our goal is to find a way to take manure, Put it into a process and come out with some money at the end. Unfortunately, in the area industry, too often we put money into a process and manure comes out the other end, but we keep working at it. And so when we asked ourselves as Nutrient how we could do this and what would be the best approach to do this and what would be an ideal system, we, we identified seven things. Efficient odor control, efficient control of nitrogen and phosphorus in the water, improved fly control. We don't talk about vectors an awful lot, but if you're living this, you know, in the southern part of the country or even in the northern part of the country in the summer and somebody spreads manure and doesn't incorporate it right away, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, ability to control the pathogens. And that's an important thing, particularly when you can get out to the shellfish beds in the Pacific Northwest and things like that. There is a real impact. Uh, we would like to reduce all emissions, but air emissions particularly, methane, ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, even NOx. And then we'd like a return on the capital. It would be nice to be able to make money. Fertilizer value, energy value, heat if you need it, environmental credits, whatever way we can to incentivize the industry to help address the environmental problems. And then finally, we'd love it to be very easy to operate and cost very low. So that would be perfect. Now, I would love to tell you that the next slide shows the technology that does all of this, but it ain't helping. Um, we as a dairy industry know, have always known that we have basically a huge asset in the cow. She's able to bring in feeds that humans can't eat. You can't go out in an alfalfa field and, and live happily for very long. But she can take that and convert it to milk and protein products and meat that humans can use. And, and basically, I have a friend, Gordy Jones, who who calls the dairy cow the foster mother of the human race because she's allowed us to expand and grow and it's really the relationship with cows and dairy and ruminants that has allowed us to do that. But the other part of that is there's a natural cycle of returning the nutrients back to the soil. And now with anaerobic digestion and other means of energy production, we've actually learned how to harvest and return energy. And so we can, we can solve many, many problems by the proper management of manure and so one of the things that we set out to do as we were looking at all of this is how can we inform people about what technologies are out there, what technologies are accepted, what technologies are proven, what works, and where does it work? Because some technologies work very well in certain situations, 
and not at all in other situations. We've all heard the expression, when the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Okay, so when the guy comes on your farm that's selling solid liquid separators, everything looks like it needs to be separated, solids from liquids. There's another guy who comes in, everything, he's selling anaerobic digesters, everything needs an anaerobic digester. But the reality is, there are some places and some times that technologies are good, and then there are other places where you need multiple technologies. So this is just a, a brief glimpse at some of the technologies that are in the catalog. Like I said, there's almost 275, and we, as a team, have evaluated over 300 technologies. And you see, it might say, well, why would you evaluate them and not put them in the catalog? Some of them aren't being sold in the dairy industry anymore. Some of them aren't being sold in the dairy industry in the United States. There are valid technologies, but they're only sold in Europe where the company isn't doing business in the dairy space anymore. What we did as we looked at this is we started to say, you know, this is an awful lot of stuff. So how can we identify those things that are either emerging or have proven themselves and kind of highlight them? And that's these two, and let me see if I can do the pointer. That's these two logos. Nutrient recognized does not mean this will work for you on your farm. Nutrient recognized means that these guys have proven track record. And if you're going to look at this type of technology, you should probably consider looking at this vendor because they've kind of established themselves in the dairy industry. The emerging technologies, on the other hand, may not have had as long a history, but may have excellent potential. Or we may see that they work, but on more limited scope. And so as we go through and as we look at how we sort and look at the catalog, we start to sort things on the basis of points. So in addition to these points, we have other scoring criteria like the meat matrix and the nine point scoring. This is just a quick review of what we're, of what we've done. We started, Nutrient was launched in 2015. Um, the technology team was launched shortly after Nutrient began and includes a bunch of very, very professional, very good people. You don't, Kurt kind of glossed over, not glossed over, but didn't get into the weeds. Like, we spent hours discussing, are we going to talk about nutri uh, ammonia recovery or nitrogen recovery? Are we going to talk about nitrogen losses? And trying to come to those decisions and hearing professional people discuss, well, what's more important? to the dairy man, that whether he recovers the nitrogen or whether he loses the nitrogen. And we came to the decision that we were going to talk in terms of recovery because it's important for him to be able to offset costs of buying nitrogen somewhere else. So it's more important for an indices to say, this is what's going to help you, than to say something, and, and nothing against papers, but you concentrated on ammonia losses. Doesn't matter as much to the dairyman if it if he can't translate it to what's it going to help him with. So we concentrated on where, how, what technologies keep ammonia or keep nitrogen. So we launched the catalog almost two years ago, and then we started in, in May of 2018 to have the discussion that was all the way until March of the following year, so over a year um, of 2019. So the catalog actually has the neat matrix of so you, you can see that on the catalog. Real quickly, we talked about the ratings. That is really interesting. Don't know what that is. It's supposed to be a laptop. <laughs> we have a nine-point scoring criteria, and I'm going to review that with you really quick. That was our first kind of indicator, quick visual reference for, you know, how technologies work. Talked a little bit about the uh, technologies that are promising and that have established themselves and the ones that look like they're in the right, headed in the right direction. When we looked at the nine point criteria, we said, what would be important to a dairy? What would be important to a guy who's gonna buy technology? And one of the things we said is, you know, operational history. Again, our TAC team is a very focused group. We, we like to be specific. And we didn't want these to be very subjective. We wanted these to be measurements. When you looked at a technology that had a three, you knew that was installed on 10 North American dairy farms. So real quickly, you can see whether or not something's just being introduced or whether something's being used on a, on a multitude of farms. So as we went through, we looked at what's the commercial viability, 
Do they have an operational history? Are they reliable? Do they have some real measurements? Or are they on three farms, but they only got on all three last week? And then have they actually made it onto 10 farms? And then we looked at it and we said, will they tell us what their CapEx is? Will they tell us what are their OpEx is? You know, will they fill out forms that, and I want to thank Jeff and the manure team at NRCS. They, they provided us a wealth of information that we're trying to incorporate into some of our documents so that one day we hope that if you pull our technical resource, technical information sheet off of our website, you'd be able to walk into an NRCS office, sit down and say, I've identified this technology, and here's the documentation that we can work together with you, NRCS, to fill out a form for equip funding. We would like to be that complete, that everything that you need to identify is there, except the you know specifics about your farm. And then finally, we looked at the industry value, and we do uh, got a little carried away. Um, what's the value proposition? Does this make a product that this farmer can sell? And then. We do case studies. Our case studies are a little different. Doesn't look at the whole farm. Looks at that specific technology. And what we tell vendors is, we want you to take us to the location that best suits your technology, where it's working the best. And we want to do a study on that so that people can go and look at a document and say, OK, if I look like that, this is going to work. So it's just something real life where we can be on the ground and actually see this is the best we can do. So it really is a collaboration with the vendor to develop a document that's accurate and factual, but shows it in its best light. And then finally, we give them an opportunity to provide us with reviews from their customers. And if they get three positive reviews, they get the check. And you'd be surprised, everybody gets a mailing, you'd be surprised how few actually get that kind of check. They just either don't send it out to their customers or aren't confident enough that they can find three positive returns. But um, real quickly, Kurt talked about the neat matrix. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. This is the second level of evaluation. It was done based on technology type, not on individual technology. And I'd like to now take you on a test drive. So in March, when we introduced the neat technology, we revamped our website. So if you've been haven't been there in the last few weeks, you, you really haven't seen the technology catalog. What we've done is we've added a whole new way. We've, we've, we've listened to people who said, Mark, we don't want to have to scroll down two and a half pages to get to the search bar. And so what we've done is we've created a bunch of different ways you can search the, the catalog and where are the keywords. We put it right at the top of the page. I, I'm going to give you just a little bit. You have to go to the Nutrient website, which is nutrient.com. Click on the technology catalog. The first time you do that, a pop-up will come up and it will ask for your name and your email. That will go to our communications director. We don't sell our mailing list, but we do like to keep in contact with people. And then it also has the standard terms and conditions you guys are all clicking on it. You know, like we use cookies. That, all that stuff is listed there. You can read for hours if you want to, or you can just put in your name and user and click OK. <coughs> Yeah, I know, you do internet stuff. And then you're in. There's no cost, and there's no cost to the vendor. So we are not a for-profit um, portion of our business is not for, done with the catalog. The catalog is not supported by any technologies. We are a for-profit company, but the catalog is not a revenue source for our company. So I popped down all of them and pasted them in here so you can see. You know, a couple of the things that you'll notice is you can just sort by the category you're in. You can look at what kind of problem are you trying to solve. If you notice, these are the same categories on the technology type that Kurt pointed out that we did the neat matrix on. You can also look for equipment vendors, consultants, service providers, and then you can look at what kind of products. You know, I, I have a neighbor that would really like, you know, <laughs> me to help supply him with bedding. Well, click on that. You'll pull up everything that's got a bedding metadata. And then you can do the default sort, which is going to sort based on that nine-point score. And it adds one extra point if you're a virgin technology, and adds two extra points if you're a nutrient recognized technology. Or you can simply sort alphabetically. If you're looking for somebody specifically, and you know they're embedding, you can click on it, sort alphabetically, and go straight to the page. 
So real quickly, we just I just clicked on all technologies. No preference here. You can see some of the technologies that are selected. Fan separator. We've seen certainly seen a lot of those. Almost wish I had moved down one line to show you how to click on. So it would have been a continuous theme all the way through, but I didn't. Um, so you just click anywhere in that bar, and you can see over on the right hand side, you can actually see the score, and it shows up as the score as you get farther down. You can see there's a couple, a couple of them missing. So on this first page on the sort, you can see basically kind of where technologies are. Once you click on the information, if you're not really sure how to use it, there's a little icon here. You'll see the same icon here. Anytime you see that icon and you click on it, you get an example of how to use the use the page, what, what's happening here. And I'm just going to spend a moment here because one of the areas that we are very proud of and work very hard on are these business information requests and technology information requests. And they kind of get lost. But if you really want something more than a paragraph, the business information report is basically a four-page report that talks about the business and how they do business. The technology information report is 9 to 15 long, pages long, depending on the technology. Gets down to, do you need special construction? What kind of water fittings do you need? Do you need What kind of electrical supply do you have? We really ask some very, very detailed questions in those. And then, of course, critical indicators and the technology reviews, which is something that has been in there all along. Uh, we talked about the neat matrix. Just real quickly going to show you this gives you a quick explanation if you forget on how to read the neat matrix. And then if you want to get more information on the technology type, now we're not going to pull up a 22 page document, but we are going to give you some information about the general technology, just some bullet points. And then if you want to click on it one more time, we actually take that and we develop, and again, this is an interesting thing. There's actually words here. Um, but we have developed a kind of a bullet pointed overall summary that gives the application, how it can work, things like that. This is not included in the paper that we're submitting. So, you know, some of the people in academics might have goes, well, you guys are telling us a lot to be able to submit a paper. All of this is basically in the appendix of the paper. The paper we're submitting is on the process of developing the neat matrix and using the ISO modified tools. So that paper will eventually even be attached here, but we'd like to get it peer reviewed first and we publish it in the paper. And then we go to the nine point scoring. Again, I'm staying with the, the technology that we pulled up, which is the VBO digester, but it talks about what we know as the nutrient tat team and what we understand about the technology and then it gives you the score and if you need to understand if you hover over the one it tells you that that's you know three or more units and if you click on the middle it takes you to basically a, a full page that describes how the nine point scoring system works and so that's a real quick flyover if you will of nutrient and what the technology catalog does um, I'll take a few questions. Do we have a minute or two? One. Just one. So I used up all the time, but um, anything you need, you can probably see there. This is the uh, this is the actual site, and uh, I believe all of this information is available after the conference. So any questions, real quick? Does the vendor review what you wrote about? The vendor reviews the first page. The vendor does not review the, the actual nutrient review of the technology. We used to say below the line, but um, now the line is going away when we redid the page. But we do send the information out, and you will sometimes see a, a stamp that says not vendor verified, because we'll put it. Sometimes there are people who just don't want to give out any, any information. We serve as a resource for the industry. And if you're not willing to talk to us, you're not willing to verify this information, then we're going to put the information that's publicly available on the internet out, and we're going to tell people you haven't contacted us to correct anything, so this is the best we can do. But generally, people respond really quickly, come back, oh, hey, you missed, you know, you missed this, or we'll get an email that says, hey, our company just became part of a division of another company, can you make the change to the website? So there's a lot of vendor interaction. 